Hey guys, welcome to Nathan's Car Care. I'm Nathan, and today I'm going to be showing you how to fix a cracked and broken armrest on a 2010 Toyota Highlander. Now this issue is not isolated just to Highlanders, but I've seen it on Priuses and Camrys and a couple others as well. So you should be able to take these same principles and apply them to your vehicle very easily. And the culprit behind this is actually a couple broken plastic supports. It's really a design flaw by Toyota. The way they made it, the armrests are not very sturdy. And the thing that makes this difficult is that a lot of glues won't stick to the kind of plastic that Toyota used. But I found a special epoxy that will stick and it has worked very well for the vehicle that I'll show you. It's rock solid, exactly like how it came from the manufacturer. It's a great fix, it's easy, and most importantly, the epoxy is not expensive. So it's something you can easily do in a weekend or even less. So let me go ahead and show you how you do it. All right, so here's the problem right here. Uh, this is the armrest on the passenger side on a 2010 Highlander. And as you can see, if you put just a little bit of pressure here, it gives. So the supports that are right in here that are supposed to hold this up have broken off, and I'm going to show you how to fix that. All right, so to take the door panel off, you need to grab a small screwdriver like this. We're going to take this insert out real quick. Just get up right up under the edge like that. And just pop it up. Scoot a little bit down, pop it up, and there we go. So next we need to remove this trim piece right inside here, which if you pull the handle out, you can see it covers that area there. So we'll come in here by the lock, get up behind it, and it just pops right out. All right, so now we need to get rid of this trim piece here, so we'll take our small screwdriver again. We'll come in from the top right here, and it'll just pop right off, just like that. So the last trim piece we need to remove is this one here. So again, we'll take our screwdriver and come at it from the bottom and just pull it right off. All right, so now we need to remove some bolts that are on here before we can pry the panel from the bottom. Uh, before we get started, I would recommend you go out and get yourself one of these. This is a little magnetized dish that you can put all your screws and bolts in. That way you can't lose anything, nothing can roll away. They're all gonna be right here. Definitely a good investment, especially if you got a bunch of different kinds of screws you need to take out. This is a great idea. I have a link down in the description where you can get one off Amazon. Go check it out. Definitely worth getting at least one. I personally have two of them. You can also get different sizes and shapes, but I like these small round ones. That way you can have multiple and keep things a little more separate if you want. Um, there's a link down in the description where you can get these off Amazon. Follow that affiliate link and you can get them right there. And then one more tool that I would recommend is this. This is a trim tool. It helps pry the trim. As you can see, it's angled at the end. It can go around any pins that are in there, those plastic pins that like to break. It also has this little rubber ball here to help prevent marring. It's a great little tool to have, and it was fairly cheap as well. Again, this is going to be down in the description, affiliate link down there where you can get that. Okay, so the first screw we need to remove is going to be this one here. And then now we need to remove all these screws here. So we've got one here, one here, one here, and one here. All right, so now we're just gonna take our trim tool and we're just gonna pry along the bottom first and then along the top as we need and pop it right off. So to fully remove this door, as you can see, we have these cables here which run to the door handle. We need to pull those out. We also have a wire down here that runs to the light on the door. And then we have these wires right here which run to here. There's a couple screws on here that we have to remove before we can pull the handle and these wires out. So we're going to take off these first and this one here. To remove this one, there's just a little tab here. Just push down on that and pull it straight out. 
On this one here, just take a little screwdriver, push the tab in, and then you can pull it out. Just like that. To get this wire out, there's just a little tab right here behind the light. Just pull it out. So to remove this, we just have to take out this screw here, that screw there, and then we can pull that right out. Now to remove this, all you have to do is there's one clip right up here. Take your little screwdriver, just pry that up. Now it's free. Now to get it out, you are going to have to open the handle from the inside here. You can go ahead and pop the wire out, and then you can just pull it straight out. Now the door panel is 100% free. Alright, so a couple tools that we're going to use to deal with the epoxy. We're going to have a mixing board for the epoxy because it is a two-part epoxy. We've got some old stiff material. These are like little gift cards that I'm using uh, to spread and mix. We've got gloves so you don't epoxy yourself. I'm going to use tape to create a very simple form to hold the epoxy in place while it cures. And then scissors just to cut these if we need it. And now for the star of the show that really makes this possible is this right here. This particular one is from a store called Superior Hobbies. This is where I found it. So it's actually designed for model aircraft and other models like that. It's not even designed for this sort of work, but it sticks really well to plastic and it really did the job on this particular plastic, which was the reason why super glues and other epoxies just wouldn't cut it. So this one here is formulated for plastic. It's an excellent one. Uh, this is the quick cure. They also have a mid cure and then a long cure. So you can get whichever you want, but for the, in this situation, we only need the quick cure. This one will set up in five minutes. And this brand is Bob Smith Industries. Now this is the only epoxy that I could find that would actually work and would stick to the plastic. So it's actually, it's, it's important that you get this specific kind. I even tried specialized plastic bonders, such as this from JB Weld, and it didn't do the trick. So get yourself this specific epoxy which I have linked down in the description where you can get it on Amazon. Use that affiliate link, buy yourself some. It's really good epoxy. So we got our tools, we got the magic that'll make it happen. Let's go ahead and apply it to the door. All right, so here's the inside of our door. And as you can see, the way that Toyota did this, um, it seems to be most of their points for securing stuff on the inside of the door, they used a weird kind of plastic melted joint. And that plastic just simply breaks off too easy. As you can see right here, one of the supports the plastic just broke right off. And as you can see also right here, this plastic broke. So what we're going to do is we're going to be applying epoxy to these spots and then reattaching it. Now this does mean that in order to get the epoxy everywhere that it needs to be, uh, you will need to pull back this felt. Just pop it off the melted joint. You can epoxy it back later if you want to, but you don't have to. So these armrests have three supports in there like this one right here. And it's just a relatively flimsy piece of plastic that's supposed to take all the weight. So what we're going to do, even though that this is the only one that's broken free from the door, we're going to go ahead and reinforce all three of them. So we're going to put epoxy in there to reinforce them as a preventative measure, and then we'll also put some epoxy here on the top. But these here are the main ones that do all the support, and these are the ones that usually break. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up equal amounts of the epoxy. We're going to spread it around and then I'm going to show you a little form that we're going to make with this masking tape to help hold it in place while it cures. Alright, so before we mix up our epoxy, it's a good idea to go ahead and get the form that we're going to use around here. Go ahead and get that made. And what I'm using is I'm just using this automotive masking tape. You can use regular masking tape, it doesn't really matter. And you don't even have to use this to begin with. If you don't want to, you don't have to. It'll just make it a little neater in the end. So I'm just going to take this, take off a good piece. What I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over this top part, just like that right there. So fold it in thirds, like that. So we still have a sticky surface here. And then I'm just going to apply it. 
around the spot where we're putting our epoxy. And it's not going to be a perfect form, that's for sure, but it will do the trick. All we're trying to do is prevent the epoxy from flowing out, because what we want to do is we want to build it up right here so it, be it becomes stronger than the plastic before that was there originally. So just put it in like this, as you can see right here how I have mine. It's just around it. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, I'm sure some will get out, but that'll keep the majority of it right there on the inside. Alright, so this is what's known as a two-part epoxy. We have the epoxy and then we have the hardener. So these two have to be mixed together in order for it to cure. So we need to mix equal parts onto this board and then thoroughly mix them up with our stirring stick. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all of this right there into that mold and make sure to work it into the plastic itself. All right, and then now all we have to do is we have to do that to the other two as well. This particular epoxy sets in five minutes, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a weight to hold that there in place once we have it positioned, and then in five minutes we'll move on to the next one. And just be sure to double check the positioning before it sets. Make sure it's exactly where you want it. All right, so once you have all the epoxy in there and everything's cured up, you can either leave the tape or remove it either way. Some of it may not come out if it's too stuck under the epoxy. But make sure you do let it fully cure before you do this. And then to stick the felt back down, you can use little drops of epoxy or you can use super glue. Alright guys, if you found that video helpful, make sure you share the video with all your friends, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and while you are subscribing, go ahead and hit the bell icon, that way you can be guaranteed to be notified every single time that I upload a video. Don't forget to check out my website, NathansCarCare.com. There's a lot of resources over there, as well as an Amazon affiliate store over there where you can find all the products and tools that I use in my videos, so make sure you go check it out, NathansCarCare.com. And until next time, this is Nathan, signing off.